Welcome to Toy Poloi. No Legos were harmed in the making of this video. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Steve Austin's engine block. The first releases of Steve Austin came with this rather unique looking engine that he could hold in his hand and using the uh, pump action on the back of his body, he could raise his arm up, showing how strong he was and lifting this engine block in the air. But I've seen quite a few of these over the years where the handle part that should be on the front here, you can see him holding it there, is missing. And so this block is then no longer able to be used by Steve Austin because there's nothing for him to grip on and he can't lift it up to show his strength. So my plan today is to uh, take this engine block apart and make a new grip to go on here so that we can get this back up and working and Steve Austin can show off his uh, super bionic powers once more. Okay, so here we have a selection of engine blocks and this is what the engine block should look like. And you see there is this black handle on the front of it that Steve Austin can hold on to and that, that's how he sort of shows off his bionic powers. But quite often you'll see them like this with that uh, piece missing or snapped off. Uh, and without that, then the engine block really can't be used it's a sort of decorative display piece but it doesn't work with the action figure so what I want to do today is make that piece it looks when you first look at it a sort of fairly complicated but actually if you break it down into its component parts it should be quite straightforward to make we've got a couple of bars here a slightly thicker bar here which he grips onto and then this sort of flat plate on the back and then some form of attachment inside to hold it in place uh, so I think using some fairly basic bits of styrene with some styrene rods of different dimensions and some flat styrene we can make something that works. Luckily with these as well, they're fairly straightforward to uh, break apart. They're glued all around the edge, but it's a fairly thin piece of glue. And if you sort of get a knife in there and sort of twist it a bit, you can hear that this uh, glue will sort of crack and you'll be able to get it apart. And actually this one here, uh, when it arrived here, uh, it was already in that state. You could easily sort of pull it apart. So uh, just a little bit of uh, work and you will be able to uh, prise these apart. And once we've got it apart, you can now see that it should be fairly straightforward to make something. So we're going to get on with that. Here though, on the right hand side, you can see this is my uh, custom block that I had made for, for when I was working on a prototype version of Steve Austin. I wanted to make him look like some prototype images and I had this sent away and chrome plated. So this is actually plated in metal. It's really nice and heavy compared to this one, which feels quite like I have this lovely chrome version. Do check out that video. I'll put a link to that in the description. So if you want to see uh, how I got this uh, prototype version made, uh, then check that out. But let's get on with uh, making this replacement grip for this one here and we'll see how close we can get it to the original. So as I said I'm going to be using styrene to build this. I've got some uh, two millimeter thick styrene sheet. Uh, I've also got some styrene rod in a couple of different sizes. I have some six millimeter diameter rod that I was using for an action man project and I bought myself some four millimeter uh, diameter rod as well because I can see the edge pieces of this handle are thin and a quick measurement says that that's about four millimeters and another quick measurement says this handle piece is about six millimeters. So with those two sizes sizes of rod I should be able to make this section. That little cross beam there I think I'm going to make out of a piece of Lego because that's just slightly thinner so a bit of a antenna or aerial should work quite nicely there. The first thing that we need to do is work out how to attach this whole plate to the inside of uh, the engine block. You can see here there's this uh, sort of section on the front if I clip this back together like so. We've got this little gap here where we can insert a piece of styrene. and we'll build a wall or something on the inside to uh, sort of hold it in place and then we need to build this uh, black plate on the outside and that seems to be all that is needed to hold this in place so we need to make a piece of styrene that fits in there but you can see this is not going to be a flat piece of styrene it has a bend in the middle of it so I've already cut a small piece of styrene here which is the right width but it won't fit in because we obviously need to add that angle so what I'm going to do is cut that down the middle and then the plastic weld it so that it's got a slight angle to it and that should fit in there so let's get that small piece made and and then we can make the plates that go on either side and uh, make sure we've got sort of firm fixing before we build the rest of the handle. So um, yeah, let's get that piece cut to shape.
OK, so you can see there I've made a slight uh, angle in the middle of it just by cutting it down the middle. Often uh, when you cut something like this, the uh, cut is not perfectly straight. So all I did was cut it down the middle and then flip one piece over. And I've ended up with this uh, perfect little angle there. And that should fit nicely into that little gap just like that. So there you go. It's a very simple thing to do. Now I'm going to take this apart and just make some measurements inside because I want to make a, another plate of uh, styrene. It doesn't need to be neat at all. It just needs to fit inside uh, so that when we sort of make the outside part, the inside has something to grip onto. So I'm just going to cut a piece of styrene that's sort of a rough shape that fits inside that and I will then plastic weld this piece onto it and then we can start working on the outside bit. Uh, the inside can be as messy as you like, it's not really that important, There's nothing's going to be seen. So um, yeah, we'll just make something a little bit scruffy that does that job, and then we'll have to be nice and neat when we make these outside pieces. OK, so you can see I've now attached that to a fairly simple looking plate. This doesn't need to be neat because it will be hidden inside. But the idea is that we slot that in there. That little uh, angled piece fits in the gap and then we can drop this top section on. So if I just check that this does actually all work, it's going to fall in. I can see if I don't hold it. So let's just hold that there and shut this down. How do I do that like that? Yep, that's going to be perfect. So you can see we've got the uh, piece of plastic sticking through. So we now need to make this front plate which is the plate on here. And I've already measured that. That is uh, 35 millimetres by 7 millimetres. So I've marked that onto this sheet of styrene here and I've already scored it. Just need to break that off and then we'll tidy up the edges and round some of the corners because it's a nicely sort of rounded piece of plastic. So you can see once you've cut this uh, styrene and scored it, it's very easy to break. So we've got that like that. I can also see on the underside of this piece, the bottom edge is not flat. There's a slight angle cut in because of this round piece here. This has got a slight hump to it. So I need to cut just ever such a slight angle into the bottom of this. And then we can attach that on. I need to trim that down a bit. But once that's in place, that will be the sort of the main fixings for this handle. So let's make a few little modifications to this. We'll round all the edges. We'll cut that bit out, we'll attach it on, and then we can start with the complicated part. So I've ended up with that shape. So we've got the rough piece that goes inside. We've got that slightly angled piece cut short and then the plate on the front just with a little notch cut out of the bottom of it. And that now sits quite nicely 
in that piece there if I put the uh, lid on let's just see if this actually does all sort of hold in place it should hold quite firmly in place and then we can attach the handle to the front part like that yeah that's good that's looking exactly how I wanted it so we can now go ahead and construct the handle for that I'm going to be using the uh, six millimeter uh, diameter rod to make the front part and we'll make that first so this I have measured and that is uh, 33 millimeters long so I'm just going to cut a piece of this rod to be 33 millimeters and then I need to round the ends you can see it's got quite nice rounded ends uh, to cut this I'm just going to use plastic nippers because obviously we're rounding the edge so the end doesn't actually need to be that neat when I first cut it I'll cut it and I've got various bits of sandpaper and uh, sanding things and I'll just round the ends and then uh, we can sort out attaching the angled pieces that form the rest of the handle but let's get this piece shaped and cut first. <music> Okay, that's that uh, piece nicely rounded I think that should work very well actually it's just about the right size I think it's maybe just slightly larger than the original one but that's close enough for uh, my liking so we now need to make these uh, little bars that attach it to the main part of the engine block and for that we're going to be using this four millimeter styrene rod and I found that I've got this uh, round needle file that I can cut a sort of very slight curve into the end of it because we obviously want to attach this to this curved surface so you can see I've filed that very fine little curve into it which means that that will now fit quite snugly on there so I'm going to plastic weld that in place I'm going to leave the rod a bit long and then I'll cut another one and fit it on there and once we've got both on we'll then try and cut them to uh, match because we've obviously got to cut a slight angle to it because it needs to be angled up but I think if I attach the rods to this first we can then uh, work that out so yeah I'm just going to file another little groove in another piece of this and then we'll plastic weld the two in place but you can see that gives you a nice little curve and we should be able to join that very firmly. So you can see that's stuck really quite well. I have done a little bit more fine tuning, just a little bit more sanding to uh, flatten some of these edges and round a few more. I have also filled around this joint just using some super glue and some baking soda, which I have in a little pot here. Uh, that gives you a really nice sort of uh, almost like a welded join which you can then sand down so you can see it almost looks like one piece now without that it was just a bit too obvious that there was a join so I'm happy with how that's looking we now need to make the little crossbar if I bring in the original one you can see it's starting to look much like the original so we've got to make this crossbar again I'm going to be using the four millimeter styrene rod I've already marked this off I've just sort of held this up against the piece that I've made to measure I'm going to cut that off again and again I will use this little rounded uh, needle file just to round the ends and then we can slot that in and we'll plastic weld that in place and that really will look much like the original handle so um, yeah I'm happy with how that's going let's just get this cross beam in and then we can try and attach this to the uh, back plate that I've already made
incorrect. Try again. With a little bit more filling and filing, you can see I've managed to get a shape that really does look like the handle. So I've just marked off at the lengths I need to cut. A quick measurement on the underside of uh, the one that I have here gives me the sort of rough scale of it. So it's about from the very tip to the very top is about 34 millimetres, not particularly long. So that's what I've measured on here. I've just marked it with a pencil. So that's the, the underside, so about 34 millimetres. We now need to cut these ends with an angle on them because we've got to attach them to this plate that we've made and it needs to be at an angle. And I'm looking at this and it's somewhere between, it's I was going to say about 35 degrees. It's not 45, it's not, so um, 35 will do. So I'm going to sort of roughly guess that. Again, I'm just going to use my plastic nippers to cut these ends off. So you can see I've marked the pencil there. That's on the longest bit, so I need to do the angle like that. And I'll just sort of do this by eye. I can, because I have an original here, I can use it as a little bit of a guide, but it's about 35 degrees if you don't have one to copy. So um, let's get this cut. And I've got to be very careful because I've got to make both of these match. So I will probably go a bit quiet while I'm doing this just to make sure we are getting somewhere and getting it right. Does that look right? Mm. No, nope, a little bit more, I'm going to say. About that. Yeah, something like that. So if I cut this one first, make sure it's nice and neat. And then I'm going to line up and I'll do the other one as well. And again, try and match this as best I can. So about like that. We can always modify these a bit, do a little bit of filing just to sort of fine tune it. But as long as I get them close enough, so it's like that. And we'll see. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Does it line up top? Yep, it does. So I'm going to just do a little bit of filing on that, just a bit of sanding, just to even them out a bit. And then I'll plastic weld those in place. They need to be plastic weld right at the bottom edge of this. I can see on this, yeah, so when we weld them on, they've got to be right at the bottom like that. And then we need to make some tiny little uh, bits of plastic just to sort of, I guess, little supports underneath it. But yeah, a little bit of filing, then plastic weld those on. And you can really see how this is starting to look. Is looking really good but uh, before we uh, sort of finally finish this off we need to add two little supports if we look underneath the original handle you can see there's these little uh, sort of bits of plastic like buttresses or something to give an extra bit of support to stop you being able to bend this down and break it off I can see this being a weak point on this toy that actually probably the reason why these things break is because you can pull them up and you can push them down it's got quite a lot of leverage on a very small area so we need to add these little uh, bits of plastic onto ours as well to stop that happening so what i've done is i've cut two very tiny pieces of uh, two millimeter styrene to shape uh, really done this quite crudely you can see they're not particularly well finished off i'll plastic weld them in place and then i'll sort of uh, tie them up once they're glued in place when it's a lot easier to deal with they're such tiny pieces you can't really do any uh, sort of sanding or fine tuning so I, again i'm just going to plastic weld these on the underside of these posts here right in the middle of them let them set and then we'll do a little bit of sort of fine tuning fine sanding and then we can give this a coat of paint but i'm very happy with how it's looking you can see it's quite a close match to the original and by the time it's painted i think it'd be very hard to spot so let's get these plastic welded on a little bit of finishing up and uh, we're good to go
and there we have it that's now all dry so you can see we've got these little extra supports just on the underside of that handle let's do a final test fit before we get this painted so that fits in very nicely those fit just either side of the sort of red bulge on the front of that engine block we've got the top section we can slot that in goes over the top of everything and then we click that in place like so and there we go that is a handle if I bring in the original one even before it's painted you can see that's a pretty good match I'm very happy with how that's turned out yeah I think that's not too bad at all by the time that is painted I think you would be hard pushed to notice that that is not an original handle it may be just a tad longer just trying to work that out if I made it just I think I've made it just slightly longer just uh, because my uh, angled cuts are not quite right and it's maybe slightly lower down very subtly though I think it's uh, good, certainly good enough for what I need it so I'm now going to take this back apart again so it's just unclip that I'm going to spray this with some car spray I've got some black satin finished car spray which I think will give a similar sort of sheen to this so I'm going to take this out to my garage a couple of coats of this uh, black satin car spray let that dry then we can finally fit this and we'll test it on the figure and see if he can actually hold it but so far that is looking far better than I expected it would it's a very close match to that original handle so yeah very pleasing A quick coat of paint you can see it makes all the difference that really now does look like the grip so let's put this uh, engine block back together and we can then test it on the figure so this just slots in there like that we can then hook this over here I'm not actually going to bother gluing this uh, back together because it seems to fit quite nicely and quite snugly so I think I'll just leave that engine block as is and if I ever want find an original one maybe I will find an original at some point I can replace it but uh, for now you can see that those two aren't looking too bad at all it's a little bit longer as I say I think I cut it just a little bit too long but overall the shape is really there and it does remarkably look like the original ones so I'm very happy with uh, how that is looking it's much better than I expected let's try this on the figure and see if he can actually hold it and see if he can lift it so here are two Steve Austins here's the engine block and we can just slot that in his hand it should just fit in quite firmly which it does that's working very nicely so let's test this out if I rotate his eyes and head to look at the engine block and then press the button it is now lifting up and we've got a sort of fully working engine block again I say it's not the easiest of uh, things to make it takes a little bit of uh, sort of fiddly construction we did need a couple of different types of styrene but I'm really pleased with how this looks and as I say finding engine blocks now with these uh, handles unbroken is getting harder to do I went to a toy fair recently and I saw uh, an engine block with the handle was about 20 pounds and a broken one without the handle was four pounds so if you can find a broken one it's far cheaper and this has really not cost that much to make and it's only taken me about an hour to create it so for me that is a real win I'm very happy with how this is looking and I've managed to complete another six million dollar man figure I like projects like this because they take a little bit of thought you've got to work out what components you need to cut and what shapes you need to make to turn it into that final shape and in this instance you can just use some basic sheets of styrene and a couple of different sizes of styrene rod and I've been able to make a very convincing handle for this vintage six million dollar man engine block so I hope this video has been of interest to you if it has then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video make sure to check out some of my other six million dollar man videos as I've done quite a few over the years and thanks for watching thanks for watching toy ploy subscribe for more great videos you can also follow toy ploy on Twitter Facebook and Instagram